The English have always been cliquey. It's part of their charm, or their lack of it. And the burial and memorial customs of the Abbey contrive to make them as cliquey in death as they are in life. The most obvious clique being the writers and poets gathered here in Poets' Corner. But all over the Abbey are similar groupings, little knots of the like-minded. Architects in one corner, scientists in another, engineers, musicians. Even Sir John Franklin, the polar explorer, has found someone similar to keep him warm. It's the English liking for clubs. And of course it means that when the last trump sounds and the dead begin to clamber out of their graves, there won't be any awkward standing about like there is at the start of a party. Everybody will have somebody to talk to. Henry III can enjoy a joke with Charles II. Darwin can bring Newton up to date on the latest developments. It'll all be very relaxed. Of course, a lot of them will be talking shop, but that's the English idea of heaven anyway. Verán, hay otros monumentos ¿eh? importantes. Ven encima de Shakespeare los medallones dedicados a Keats y a Shelley, poetas famosos. A la derecha de Shakespeare ven esa placa conmemorativa dedicada a la semana. Together with the coronation chair and the tomb of the unknown warrior, Poets' Corner is the most famous feature of the Abbey. And once upon a time, it would be the first glimpse you would get of the interior. But in the 19th century, visitors came in by this door. And it was the door which, in 1820, the wretched and rejected, drunken and unwashed Queen Caroline was refused admission to the coronation of her husband, George IV. The first poet to be buried here was honoured not because he was a poet, but because he was a civil servant. This was Chaucer, who had been in the household of John of Gaunt and Richard II. The original tomb of the author of the Canterbury Tales was behind the postcard counter. His bones were brought over here in 1556 and put in this splendid tomb, which was probably looted from one of the monasteries dissolved by Henry VIII. I've got mixed feelings about Poets' Corner. It's associated in my mind with Christopher Robin and the changing of the guard. Peter Pan, even Pearly Kings and a gore blimey strike a light go tourist board notion of England. It's English literature safe and cosy fine. Thomas and St Christopher, dated 13th century. Over here, of course, we've got some more famous names. You've got the very famous Charles Dickens, buried here on the instructions of Queen Victoria. Rudyard Kipling, Children's Tales, Jungle Book, etc. Thomas Hardy, another great name. And of course, I always... The English prefer their poets dead and respectable. And so many of the writers buried or remembered here are safer in death than they ever were in life. The atheist Shelley would be shocked to find himself here, and Keats too, probably. It was Harold Nicholson who was instrumental in getting their monument put up, and he was nervous lest it might look like a sausage. Which it does a bit. Orton, like Shelley, might find himself a bit uneasy about being here. He left England because it was too cosy, went to live in America. And now here he is, commemorated in the Abbey's coziest corner. And here are the first war poets. And a pretty odd bunch they are. It's only because they're safely dead that you can include on the same stone Julian Grenfell, who thought war was a great big adventure, and Wilfred Owen, who was, well, more pessimistic. I 
and this is Wordsworth. He was actually buried in Grasmere. He's rather less lonely as a cloud in Poet's Corner and in some rather odd company. Joshua Ward, who invented Fry's Balsam. The botanist Stephen Hales, who also dreamed up the ventilator. Oh, and he's lost his pen.